first time. Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with some more Jigalia Lost. Uh, if I sound any different, or if you notice that there is something different that looks on the screen, it is because I have a brand new computer, so... I still have to set up everything because <laughs> it was kind of unexpected for me to get it. Uh, so... Excuse me as I kind of go- that's also why I didn't have a video yesterday if you were wondering, hey, where was the video? That's the reason why. Alright, so today's video we're going to talk about the brand new banner units. Of course, it's going to be, I believe it's called Yukata... Uh, Yukata Cassandra and Yukata Kordan. I'm going to talk about them. I don't know what they did. This will be the first time I've been looking at them. Uh, talk about them, see how I feel about them. I'm obviously going to be summoning because I have enough for summoning, but... Yeah, let's talk about them, go through it, and of course, if you like this video, remember to hit a like on it, uh, comment about how which one of these two you prefer to be going, are you even going to be going for it, or are you just going to continue saving for the two-year anniversary that is coming up. So let's go. So first off, this is of course a Galadragalia remix, which I knew it was going to be the second that a new banner did not show up with the event, so them saying we want to make Galaban is predictable is a total lie, because we can 100% tell when a gala banner is coming. It's because a banner does not start the same day as the event. <laughs> so, <laughs> as used to be the new tell-all sign. So, let's start. let's start with the new units. I'm pretty sure they start with the new ones. We got uh, Yukata Cassandra. She is a wand unit. I'm pretty sure that's one. Uh, the end of a summer draws nigh, and I still look to be to the future. I still look to the future. Um... Garbed in nostalgic Yukata, the former court sorceress serves Sows? Wandering soul with her st Oh, she's staff, not wand. I'm dumb. Uh, a staff of healing. What drives her is reef herself in such a bittersweet memories? Does she seek to overcome any, any regrets or her objective now? Goldfish of the Hereafter restores HP to all teammates and grants all teammates the fluorescent fish effect for one for 15 seconds. During fluorescent fish, attacks will deal bonus damage to non-elemental damage to foes. Based on 20% of the user's strength, this bonus damage is not affected by buffs, ability shapeshifting or punishing effects, and will never deal critical damage or heal the user. The fluorescent fish effect will not stack. So wait, let me read that again. Start all HP to grant all teammates the fluorescent fish effect for 15 seconds. During fluorescent fish attacks, during fluorescent fluorescent fish attacks will deal bonus non-elemental damage to foes. Okay, based on 20, huh, huh. Ritual of the Soul Clan, and that's shareable. Hmm. Gradually recovers the entire team's HP for 15 seconds. Co-op ability recover potency 20%. Chain co-op ability flame taking damage strength. Plus 13%. If a team member is attuned to flame, increases their strength by 13% for 15 seconds when taking damage. After activation, this ability will not activate again for 5 seconds, benefiting the whole team. Uh, full HP equals strength 20%. Uh, stun resistance 100%. Skill 2 filled to strength uh, 30%. Increases the user's strength by 30% when their second skill is available to use. What? That's... This is a very weird unit, because it feels like you kind of want to constantly be attacking with them, but also their... their staff, right? My... It has to be staff, right? I Now I'm confused, because now it feels like she's a healer. Let's see, yeah, it's the same... that's the same... she's staff. She's 100% staff. Believe it or not, huh. So here's the one thing that's kind of a bummer. I think she's actually sounds pretty interesting. Like the fact that she's attack boat focused and also a healer makes it feel like she wants to be the opposite of what um, currently Lowen is, which Halloween Lowen is the elephant in the room when it comes to specifically fire units of this class, because for the most part, Halloween Lowen will get you through just about any fire content possible. There's usually someone willing to look for a fire Lowen, even if there are rooms with entire people that only want to use the big buff Marf uh, Chi strat, you'll always find at least some room for... Someone will always want a Lowen if they are not interested in cheesing anything. Now the answer is, will Cassandra find a place in there, or is it just going to be one of those things of now people who are looking for Lowen are going to get Cassandras? It's hard to know. We're going to have to wait and see for this one. I'm very interested to see how this goldfish of the hereafter, how much 
how much more damage she adds to it. Because it's really a thing of like, it's not her DPS that's really being added, it's the fact that she's adding it to everyone in the team, right? Grants all teammates, yeah, all teammates the fish, okay. So what happens when multiple people use the fish? Does everyone just get a buttload of fish? It's questions that remain to be seen. Again, interesting unit. We'll see how she actually does once we actually get her in hands. Uh, we got Curran uh, with uh, Lothna right here eating some cotton candy. A case. Damn, the festival will have to wait. Curran, freshly clad in a yukata, strikes out with Alafna to enjoy a Hinamoto summer festival. His initial initial trepidation quickly gave way to delight as he acclimated to the garb's breezy fit. Who knew inquiring could be so comfortable? Ricochet Bolt steals light damage to enemies directly ahead. If this skill is used by Maskable Faith mode, it will also inflict paralysis. Maskable Faith activates Maskable Faith mode. If this skill is used during Maskable Faith mode, a variant called Shimmering Pinwheel will be used instead. Shimmering Pinwheels deal light damage to the enemies directly ahead and inflict stun. This skill can only be used when the user's HP is 50% or above. The Mask Faith mode will automatically be deactivated when the user's HP falls below 30% of their maximum HP. Critical rate 10%. Light energy equals shadow resistance 8%. Multiple skill hits equal energy level up too. <laughs> Energizing the user every time the ricochet bolts um, skill hits enemies 10 times during the same combo. Poison resistance 100%. And energy equals strength critical rate 3%, uh, 3. Increases the user's strength on critical rate as their energy level increases. The maximum bonus given when the user is energized is a strength 20% and critical rate 8%. Hmm. So he's a light unit, um, they're finally gonna get their Agido this month, from what I remember, so... Someone might have come home, so I better finish this up. Oh no, there's no pausing in this new OBS, that's very unfortunate. Oh. Alright, continue on. Um, so it kind of remains to be seen. Like, all the light stuff that, I, as far as I know, I never did it, never really wanted to do it, so... Can't really help you on any of the light stuff. <laughs> all I know is that I'll care about light units once the Agido actually gets released. Um, so we'll see about that. I like the idea of this thing, it's also shareable. The, the Ricochet Bullets. And of course, the Galadragalias on Raid Up are the Galaprints. That's it? Really, just the prince. Just the prince, huh? Uh, I mean, the prince is good. He's another light unit, which kind of is, uh, we're gonna have to wait for the Akito. So maybe chance there's a good chance he's gonna be very useful for the upcoming, um, light Yagido, but there's no real- Okay, they went to the bathroom. Okay, so. Let's actually read what he does. Rising Circle, it deals light damage to the surrounding enemies and creates a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds. Increases the strength of adventurers inside of it by 20 seconds. For by 20%. Exalted Glory, deals light damage to the enemy directly ahead, inflicts paralysis, increases the entire team's strength and defense by 50% for 15 seconds. Grants all teammates a one-use shield that nullifies damage less than 20% of the user's maximum HP. This does not stack with any other shields. The skill gauge for this skill can be filled by... The skill gauge for this skill can be filled by attacking enemies, but it also gradually fills automatically. Abilities and increased skill gauge fill rate will not affect this automatic increase. So here's um, Shapeshift boost to uh, 7 when in dragon form adds 10% of damage modifier and extends Shapeshift by 20%. Light Shapeshift equals uh, HP regen 6. Uh, you heal when you go dragon. A Dragon Lights Resolve 2 reduces Dragon Gauge depletion over time by 30%, increases attack rate and shape shift by 10%. Sacred Shield 2, Draconic Charge, fills 50% of the user's Dragon Gauge when their HP drops to 30% once per quest. Um, so here's the one problem I have with the Prince, as someone who's used the Prince a decent amount. Um, it always feels like Exalted Glory takes way too long to actually come out, um, even when you do the basic combo with swords. Um, sure takes a while. Especially since, like, no moves really make it go faster. So he really is 100% just this first skill. And this first skill is real good. I'll, I'll grant him this. You, This skill is definitely worth the fact that 
it's going to be the main one you use for the majority of time you're using him. I just don't know if he's good enough to just crazy go after. It's harder to know. Once we actually know the, what the Agito is, it's going to be unfortunate because by the time we know what the Agito is, this guy is not going to be featured anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Also very suspicious of them to bring back the prince right before the two-year celebration. He was the first year um, celebration yet. So yeah, that's going to be... That's that's the Dragalia remix for this time. I don't know. I I definitely am currently feeling like you don't have to go crazy on this banner. This is definitely a chill like I don't think you can 100% skip it. The only reason I'm summoning is cuz I want Cassandra in for various reasons. Um so I'm going to be doing that. Uh but I feel like if you're going to be saving, you can unless you definitely 100% care about Perrin or Cassandra or the prince you're pretty much good to kind of skip, is what I'm kind of feeling. Especially with the two years just so close by and we have no idea who it's going to be other than chances are it's going to be very good. That's the only gut feeling I have, and the chances are there's going to be an actual Galadrigalia this uh, month as well. So, better just kind of wait and see. But that's today's video, everyone. Sorry for the weird hiccups and everything, but again, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't have a pause button on this. So... That's the end of today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, leave like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys for the next one. Goodbye.